A decade after its first ever hearing, the International Criminal Court made history in January this year when former Ivorian President Laurel Gbagbo became the first ever head of state to stand in its dock in The Hague. But critics say it's obsessed with targeting only African leaders and several member nations of the African Union are threatening to pull out. So is the ICC selectively biased against Africa and giving Western governments a pass? Or would shutting the whole thing down be a blessing for war criminals and human rights violators across the globe? To debate this, I'm joined here in the studio by Luis Moreno Ocampo, the first prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, and from Kampala by Professor Mahmoud Mamdani of Columbia University, who has long critiqued what he calls the politicized justice of the ICC. Thanks for joining me in the arena, gentlemen. Um, Luis Moreno Campo, what do you say to African governments who say they have no confidence any longer in the ICC because the ICC is now a tool of rich and powerful states in the West and is therefore only interested in prosecuting Africans? It's hypocrisy. It's hypocrisy. African bias was invented by President Bashir to cover up his genocide. President Bashir of Sudan. It's President Bashir of Sudan, which is ongoing. It's an ongoing genocide in Sudan and we are doing nothing. Where are the African leaders controlling Bashir in Sudan, nowhere. But it's not just the Sudanese who are making this argument. The Ethiopian no. foreign minister said last year Ooh. that the ICC is no longer a court for all. <laughs> it's fantastic. Look, we're in Africa for two reasons. The crimes, mo the, the most serious crimes under IC jurisdiction are in Africa. And African leaders joined the ICC first. And in addition, African leaders requested the court intervention. We are in Africa because Uganda, Congo, Mali, Ivory Coast, Central African Republic twice, all these countries requested co intervention, Comoros, and then. They came to the ICC and they said. They requested our intervention. Uh, Mahmoud Mamdani, uh, Africa is where the worst crimes occur. African governments all happily signed up to the ICC. They requested the ICC to get involved. There is no bias here, and it's hypocrisy to say otherwise, says Luis. African countries uh, joined the ICC. Uh, almost uh, sort of unthinkingly, I would say, experiences Why? Why taught us a lesson. Why unthinkingly? They were unthinkingly, unthinkingly because of one reason, which is that when you target a head of state, you are not just targeting an individual as an alleged perpetrator, you are also targeting the sovereignty of the country. No. If you take the US, for example, if the president of the U.S. commits a crime, you cannot take him to court. He has to be impeached first, and he can only be taken to court as a private individual. The ICC targets not only perpetrators, but Africa's sovereignty. Yes, head of and state. That is not acceptable. But I'm sorry. And should not Ma be accepted. Mahmoud, Nobody they sign it. Tried as they a sign it. The treaty is very clear. There is, there is no impunity. I know they signed it. They signed it, they read the, they read the statute, and they signed it. And in fact, Mandela was the one pushing for it. This is a map organized by Absala Institute showing where the crimes are committed. And when you see where the crimes are committed today, many are in Africa, many are in Asia. So in Asia, as you see, it's not there. In Arab world, as you see, it's not there. In Africa, yes, because African countries signed it. That's all the point. ICC, this is the map of the countries. Well, hold on, it's, you know, you're not only going after signers, though, are you? You go after Sudan, didn't sign it. No, Libya no. didn't sign it, but you've indicted Gaddafi and Bashir. The prosecutor can just go to the country who signed it. But in addition, the Security Council can refer situation. And they did it Libya and Darfur. But you know what happened? There were five African countries in the Security Council moment. How they vote? They vote in affirmative. So South Africa, Nigeria, Benin, Gabon, and Tanzania, the five countries vote in okay. favor of ICC. So the idea that ICC jump on Africa is wrong. African leaders were concerned about crimes committed in Africa, and they were asking ICC to help. And but now what's happening is those committing crimes are prevailing. Well, let's put that point to Mahmoud Mamdani. Uh, the, he's saying most of the crimes, a lot of the crimes are happening are in Africa, the worst crimes. African governments have signed up to it. I mean, the ICC chief prosecutor right now is from Gambia. I don't know if the worst crimes in the world are being committed in Africa. Right now, it seems to me, if you looked at the last 20 years, the worst crimes have been committed in the Middle East. But of course, the ICC will never be able to touch it because the, a, a certain member of the Security Council will not allow it to touch. And does it um, blame the Security Council, so not the ICC? These are beyond. No, but look, it says something about the ICC, not just blaming the Security Council, because the ICC promised us rule of law. 
In the Canticle is fine. The test of rule of in the, the test is fine. Of rule of law. The test of rule of law is that it should apply to everybody, particularly the most powerful. When rule of law does not apply to the most powerful, then it is not rule of law, it is warlordism. It is the rule of the powerful. Africa was taken for a ride. My job was to stop political leaders to committing crime. That's what my job that was, was controversial, of course. So would, so, would you go, so would you go after, so, so Africans might say, would you go after George W. Bush over what Kofi Annan called the illegal invasion of Iraq? But the U.S. is not a member. The U.S. is not a member. I cannot, the United I, Kingdom is a member. The United Kingdom, yeah. And so we, would you prosecute Tony Blair? If, if I have crimes to do, and if two conditions, crimes committed and they are not conducting proceedings. Well, they're not conducting proceedings in the UK. They are. They were conducting proceedings. Now, there, are no pro there are no legal proceedings against Tony Blair in the UK. No, no not against Tony Blair, against lower level. But I'm asking now, about Tony now, Blair, head of state, to use my that, point. That's let's, the point. Let's take an example. But, Britain is signed up. But, but, Tony but, Blair has been accused by many people of breaking yeah. international law. Yeah. Did, you, were, did you show any interest in prosecuting him yeah. when you were in charge? We tried to collect information about the crimes committed, and we found no connection between Blair and the crimes, and we collected. So you did investigate Tony Blair. We pre conduct preliminary examination on that. So you would if you had the evidence go after someone like Tony Blair, but you can't touch Vladimir P Putin over no. Ukraine. You can't touch Hu Jintao over Tibet. You can't touch George W. Bush over Iraq. That's what you're saying, is it? Uh, how are you an international criminal court if you can't go over three of the most powerful na on. nations in the world? It's, it's the beginning. It's like when you say, oh, oh, so eventually we will be able to get the Chinese in, and the in Russians years, and the Americans. In the 40 years, will change, but it's the you beginning. Know, it doesn't embarrass you. Just come back to an earlier issue we were discussing. It it doesn't embarrass me when the judge and the prosecutor issue these warrants, issue these summons. All of the people over the last 14 years have all been from the continent of Africa. No. That doesn't bother you at all. Well, Not no. from anywhere else. When you have crimes, you have victims and, and criminals. The victims are Africans, no, no, no. But the wait, criminals wait, are, are Africans. Wait, no, so, Mahmoud, come back in. What was going on in Sudan was a civil war. Yes. So? In a civil war, in African conflicts are civil wars. In civil wars, Victims and perpetrators change sides. Violence is not a standalone so it's okay. event. The genocide in Africa is okay for just you. A minute, just a minute. It's okay just genocide a minute. the food. That's what you're saying just to me. Minute, just, a minute, just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Violence is not a standalone event. There is a cycle of violence. Before the ICC got there, there was a UN Commission of Inquiry. And the UN Commission of Inquiry concluded that this was a civil war where there were perpetrators on both sides. And any even-handed handling of that situation required that the worst of the perpetrators on both sides be put on trial. Second thing the commission agreed was that there was no genocide. Genocide was a charge put up by the Save Darfur movement and the ICC together. Okay, and this was a political charge. It was a, po it was a political charge. And Moody's saying, I not prosecute both sides in Sudan. It's wrong. In Darfur, I prosecuted militia rebels. I did it. So which he's telling me something wrong. And the fact is, political leaders in Africa and everywhere have to understand crimes are not part of the political life. That's the limit. That's the limit they cannot okay. cross. OK, Mahmoud. Before you go to the subject of African leaders, everybody learned a lesson, including the US. The US started out by opposing the establishment of the ICC, and then the US learned that it could take advantage of the ICC. It could, it had the political power, and the ICC had a leader who was amenable to working with the strongest power in the world. Let's say Mr. Ocampo was being realistic. That's a generous description of it. This is what the US learned. African countries also learned that this was not rule of law. This was the rule of the most powerful. And since they had no protection, they were vulnerable. And, and just specifically on the African cases, you have Bashir, who you've waited seven, eight years later. He's not in front of a dock. Uh, people have criticized you for your handling of the Bashir case. Kenyatta, now president of Kenya, uh, who fine. was the case fell apart at the end of 2014. Many would say that the court, I mean, you've had two convictions in 14 years, just two people convicted. Yes. And all this time, many would say that's not a deterrent. That's a paper tiger. No, no, I propose zero conviction. So two is much more than I was expecting because the court is basically proposing state, you state, national state control the crimes. We will just intervene if necessary. And that happened in Colombia. In Colombia, they have many crimes, but they're investigating the crime. They're making agreements. But you have the a court over a billion dollars spent to do the two convictions of two it, Congolese warlords. That's the, a failure. No. But any remember, description. No. The impact. The, it's, it's about the law on the world. 
We have in each case of the ICC impacting 2.5 billion people living in state members of the ICC. Mahmoud, before we finish, let me ask you this. If I assume you would be happy to see the ICC shut down in The Hague tomorrow. What would you put in its place? Anything? I would put two things in its place. First, I would acknowledge that uh, political violence requires a political solution. <laughs> that the violence of this violence of that civil is wars powerful. is po is listen listen the violence of civil wars is political violence second thing is criminal violence criminal violence is something that needs a court but a court cannot exist without a viable political system a viable political system is one which will hold everybody accountable the problem that we have globally today is that we don't have a global political system I agree. which holds the most powerful players accountable. That's why we're doing so this. this is this is the nut that has to be cracked. Okay. If you put the cart before the horse, then the court is turned is going to be a kangaroo court. Okay, gentlemen, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much for joining me in the arena. That's our show. Upfront, we'll be back next week. <laughs>